Hello, welcome to Hindustan lecture series. This lecture focuses on introduction to mesh and vision. I am Dr. M. M. Ramya, professor in Center for Automation and Robotics, Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science. Now, when we finish this session, a learner should be able to understand the fundamentals of mesh and vision, will be able to list down the applications of mesh and vision, analyze the components of mesh and vision. To start with, what is mesh and vision? We could define it to be a field where you can automatically extract information from digital images. And it is a field where we have technology and methods that are used to provide imaging-based automatic inspection and analysis for applications such as automatic inspection, process control, and robot guidance in industry. To be very precise, machine vision is the ability of a computer or a machine to see. So as a human being, if we are able to decide on something based upon our vision and we need to transform this technique to a machine, we call it a machine vision, wherein a decision making is done based on the images acquired by a machine. Now, why do we use machine vision? Basically for three reasons. One, for an increased productivity. Number two, Waste reduction can be reduced so that, I mean, because of quality inspection. The quality inspection is automated, which means you have, you get products out of manufacturing industry with a very good quality. Number three, price reduction. Cost reduction is high when quality inspection is automated. What does machine vision do? We can broadly categorize all the applications or all the functionalities of mesh and vision under four categories. Number one is measurement, two, counting, three, decoding, and four is location. What does measurement talk about? The measurement is whenever we have an image and we try to calculate the dimensions, could be length, could be area, could be any kind of measurement that you want to do from a digital image. The second kind of work or the functionality is counting. Supposing we have a problem where we need to count how many number of tablets are available in a blister. So this counting can be automatically done by means of machine vision. Third kind of functionality is decoding, wherein you have some kind of coding that is available and your machine vision tries to decode it. It could be barcode or it could be a QR code where you try to decode it and then get information out of it. Fourth kind of application is location. You are trying to locate a particular object from a digital image. It could be based on various aspects. It could be based upon a position. I try to find out what is available in an XY coordinate, or I could locate a particular shape, or I could locate it based on color. So based on different features, I am identifying the location or the presence of a particular object. Now, where all mesh and vision is applied? It's very wide, almost everywhere we apply mesh and vision. To list a few, we have electronic component analysis, when we deal with motherboard manufacturing, and when we need to do a quality inspection of the motherboard, or it could be any electronic component, we go with mesh and vision. It could be a digital signature identification, it could be an optical character recognition, any material inspection, currency inspection, medical image analysis, adjustment alignment of, uh, adjusting the alignment of parts, and a lot of fields. Now, this is how a machine vision system looks like. The various components of the machine vision system are shown here. 
the objects are available on a conveyor in the production line. We have illumination in order to light up so that the digital image is acquired in a very good uh, quality. We have camera and lens which acts as a sensor in order to acquire the images. We have image processing library which does the entire image processing from which the decision can be acquired. We have a software which will actually help in doing this image processing. And of course, we have the conveyor or a robotic system in order to eject the object from the conveyor in case you want to reject or in case you want to sort the products. Now, this is the flow line. Elements of the mesh vision system are, to start with, we have lighting, the camera, and optics play a major role. Followed with a frame grabber, which is going to grab the images and store the image in a digital format. We then try to pre-process the image in order to enhance the image so as to improve the accuracy in decision making. The processor or computer helps in decision making. The I.O. interface is available wherein we connect the I.O. device with the processor and in case you want to reject the object from the conveyor, you pass on the command through to the I.O. device and eject the component from the production line. And the end process is the output device where it could be a display device. You see whether the component is accepted or not or for report generation, we can use output devices. So to start with the basic illumination process, the first stage of the uh, machine vision system, the entire functionality in lighting is based upon the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum starts from the ultraviolet rays and goes to the infrared rays. The visible range or the visible light is only between 700 nanometers to 400 nanometers. Now, if the mesh vision is based upon the visible light, then all the light falls into only this frequency range. And of course, today, we also use lights on the other scales of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. However, in this lecture, we will be focusing only upon the visible light. Okay, with mesh and vision lighting, 70 percentage of the problem is solved with a proper lighting setup, which means lighting plays a very important role in a mesh and vision system. The moment you have a proper lighting, we get a good image. Say, for example, to acquire this video lecture, we need a proper lighting in the hall. Now, if a proper lighting is not available, probably I will not be able to acquire a good video. So, the lighting sources, as I said, we have different kind of sources, starting with LED, halogen kind of lighting, fluorescent lighting, metal halide, infrared, ultraviolet, and a lot of you know, different lighting sources. The initial three sources will be used for small to medium scale inspection systems. Small to medium scale inspection is where you have products or objects moving on a conveyor with a minimum speed. The last group of uh, lighting sources were uh, metal halide, xenon, higher pressure, sodium, ultraviolet, infrared. These kind of lighting sources are used in large scale inspection systems where we have huge number of objects that are to be inspected simultaneously. We have steps for choosing illumination. The illumination sources are categorized on different aspects. As I said in the previous slide, it could be categorized based upon the lighting sources. The second is the type of illumination that is available. The illumination could cause a specular reflection or it could cause a diffuse reflection or it could be an ambient light. Specular reflection is received when an illumination, the illuminating light falls on the object and there is a very strong reflection. This happens 
when we have a very polished surface. Supposing we tend to provide light, we illuminate an object which is a, a ceramic material, then it could cause a specular reflection. Diffuse reflection, the light that falls on the object is spread across a certain area, we call it a diffuse reflection. And ambient light or transmitted light could be, ambient light would be the surrounding light that is available, it could be a daylight or any light that is used in industry. Transmitted light could be, if you have a transparent surface, the light transmits through the surface, through the surface of the object and passes on to the other side. So we have different illumination that are available and we can choose based upon the material that we are handling. The shape and the size of the uh, light is also a major, I mean, is also playing a major role in machine vision system. It could be a ring or a square, a dome kind of a light, or you can also use a coaxial lights. We have uh, colors, different colors of lights that can be used. Now, all these are decided based upon the object that we handle in the inspection. There are three lighting acceptance criteria. It's all about, all, all these are about the contrast of the image that we acquire. It could be based upon how we are able to extract the feature from the image, which means we should be able to segment the object that is of our interest in a more precise way. What do we require for it? If we need to segment an object from the image, the image should have a maximum contrast wherein I have the features that are of my interest, which is the object of my interest. It should have a minimum contrast in the background, which is the feature of not my interest. Then I should have a minimum sensitivity to normal variations. If I have a minor part differences, should my image be more sensitive to it? Or should I really bother about the presence of or the absence of the ambient lighting. How do I sample, I mean, how do I handle the samples? All these should be considered or not considered. It is up to the problem. Supposing, say for this case study, we see a courier parcel with a barcode. Now, generally, the courier cover comes with a cellophane tape pasted on the barcode. Now you see, we have a light applied on this cover, which should decode this barcode. Now there are two conditions wherein, because of the reflective characteristic of the cellophane paper, you get a minimum contrast in the second object. In the first kind of image, we have a very good contrast in the barcode. So, Based on all this you know, experimentation, we decide upon what light to be used, what kind of source to be used, what should be the shape of the light, and what should be the color of the light. Now, to move on to the second stage, we have a frame grabber, which should capture the image in real time and convert it to a digital image. Now, we have a continuous image which is converted into a digital image. On the left, what we see is a real-time image which when gets converted into a digital image forms a matrix of numbers. Now the process of converting a real-time image into a digital image is called image digitization. This occurs in two steps. First step is sampling and the second step is quantization. What does sampling mean? We are trying to measure the voltage of video signals. Now here in machine vision, it would be the voltage or the intensity of the light that gets reflected to the camera. It is actually measured at frequent interval of time. We tend to convert this voltage into an intensity. Intensity here is a number which tells you how strong the reflection of light is. The digitized image will be available in some rows and columns. The number of rows and columns 
is depending upon how many samples we have taken. Now here, the analog signal is given in terms of old. The old is converted into a number as and when I sample it. Whenever I have a high voltage, one is converted into 255, and when I have a very low voltage, it gives me a zero. Why zero to 255? I'll be explaining it in the next slide. Uh, however, let us assume as of now, the scale of the image to range from zero to 255. This sample is being converted to digital, which is represented in binary. Now, the values that we get here is the intensity value represented in a digital format. Now, the number of samples that I take determines the resolution of my image. On the right-hand side image, now we have a bicycle taken in two different resolutions. Though, when you see as a whole picture, you don't see much of a difference. However, when we zoom in, the pixels are more clear on the right-hand side image because the number of samples taken on the right-hand side image is much higher than the left-hand side. The next step in digitization is the quantization. Quantization tells you how many number of bits I use in order to represent the intensity. Now, if I use two bits, which means I would have four variations which could be 00, 01, 10, and 11. When I have four different values, I will be able to represent an image with four different colors. As I increase the number of bits, I will be able to have more number of colors in order to represent my image. So literature already shows if I use 8-bit colors, I would have 256 colors. 8-bit representation of colors will give you 256 different colors. Beyond 256, our human vision is not able to identify the difference between one color and the next. Hence, we limit to 8-bit color representation. So when I use an 8-bit color representation, the color values, the intensity values ranges from 0 to 255, and that is the reason why we used 0 to 255 in the previous slide. Now, the right-hand side, if you see the image, the first image has a 10-bit representation of colors. So you have a nice uh, you know, a distribution of colors, whereas on the right-hand side, we use only 6-bit representation of colors. You see the colors are not you know, widely distributed, you have minimum number of colors. So the quality of the picture is very low when it comes to low quantization method. So on the whole, when I want to create a digital image, I, am, I have an analog image. It is sampled. After sampling, I go for a pixel quantization. Once pixel quantization is complete, the output of pixel quantization is a digital image. Okay, the next stage in machine vision is pre-processing. The pre-processing focuses on enhancing the acquired image. The light helps to acquire an image. Frame grabber acquires an image, converts it into a digital format. Now, whatever image that we have acquired may not be of a very good quality. It could be due to the various disturbances. It could be due to the sensor that is available. It could be due to the various reasons. So we tend to pre-process the image so that the image is enhanced in terms of quality. Or it could be for segmentation purpose, we could do some pre-processing techniques which would help segmenting more easier. So basic image processing techniques are used in this stage. Now if you look at this slide, it talks about the various image processing techniques that are available and can be used for mesh vision. Now the very first thing is the problem domain. The domain that is available or the real environment that is available is the problem domain. Image is acquired, of course we have completed it in the previous module. Uh, which talks about the frame grabber. 
So we try to digitize it. We tend to pre-process. When we pre-process it, it could be either enhancement or it could be restoration. After pre-processing, I would have to segment it. Segmentation will talk about e extracting one part of the image which is of our interest. After segmentation, I could represent and describe it. If I need to represent the objects that has some kind of defect with some kind of color coding, then I would be using some representation technique in order to do that. So representing the object which has defects or which does not have a defect. So that should be represented. It should be recognized and then passed on to the processor or passed on to the I.O. interface that is available, which would take the decision in order to eliminate, remove the object from the conveyor line. So for all these modules, we would require a knowledge base. A knowledge base is like, what knowledge do we have about the object? For example, if I need to take or segment a bottle, then I should know the shape of the bottle, I should know the dimensions of the bottle. I should know how it would reflect the characteristics of the bottle. Now, all these are the knowledge that I already possess about the problem domain. So that is going to help me in order to do all these modules of image processing. So to talk about image pre-processing, as the name suggests, even before processing the image or segmenting the image, we process or pre-process it in order to enhance the quality of the image. So pre-processing only focuses upon enhancing the image for further action. If you look at pre-processing methods, it could be for enhancement or it could be for restoration. What do I mean by restoration? If small disturbance has occurred during image acquisition, then can I restore it back? Say, for example, when the object moves on a conveyor, due to a small vibration in the conveyor, there could be a mild motion blur that has occurred in the image. Can I restore the uh, image from this motion blurring? All these could come under restoration. Enhancement will focus upon improving the contrast or reducing the noise. All these comes under enhancement. This enhancement can be done on two domains. It could be a spatial domain or otherwise a spectral domain. Spatial domain talks about the xy coordinates, how it, where it is located, how it is located. So based upon the location, if you can do some kind of processing, all the methods fall under spatial domain. If you look at the frequency of the intensities, then I would go for a spectral domain. Spatial domain techniques have two different kind of operations. One could be a point processing, the other could be a spatial filtering. Now point processing will focus upon, as we have already seen in a digital image, we have the image represented in a form of a matrix, wherein each pixel is represented as a number, which corresponds to the intensity. Now, if you want to modify a particular point, then the xy coordinate in that matrix is retrieved, the intensity in that location is retrieved, and then you process it. So such kind of operations will be called a point processing method. A spatial filtering, however, would take a neighborhood pixels as well. Apart from the pixel that we consider, the neighborhood pixels are also considered for processing, and then they are taken for further manipulations or operations. Now here, in spatial domain methods, an operation can be done, which could be either linear or nonlinear, is performed on the pixels in the neighborhood of a coordinate x comma y. So in a matrix, if I take one coordinate x comma y, the neighborhood pixels are also considered from the input image and an operation it, which is linear or nonlinear is performed on the neighborhood pixels as well, which gives me an enhanced image f dash. The neighborhood could be of any shape. A widely used shape is rectangular. 
which could be of size 3 cross 3, 5 cross 5, 9 cross 9, etc. So I have f of x comma y which is my input image. I do some kind of transformation on the input image which is going to give me an output image g of x comma y. Here g of x comma y will be the enhanced image. Now, let us take a very simple example before we close this session. I have a simplest form of window which is 1 comma 1 of size 1 comma 1. So what I would have here is only one pixel. I am trying to transform the gray level or the intensity of this pixel to a different range. Say when I do some kind of transformation to this pixel, the intensity falls on to another area. It could be any root transformation, it could be an exponential transformation, it could be an image negative or it could be I mean any cube root transformation. So do any transformation on an image which affects the intensity of the image that we take. Now here in this image you see the original digital mammogram that is available and we tend to do a transformation on the pixels. Now the transformation function that we have taken here is L minus 1 minus R. What we do here is you take the entire dynamic range and reduce from 1 you take you are transforming the pixel moving it into the other scale of the intensity range. So what happens here is the dark pixels are converted into bright and bright pixels are converted into dark. Now here if you see the blood vessels that are available in the original mammogram are not clear because the background is dark. When we do, when we take an image negative, the blood vessels are clearly visible. So such kind of transformation will improve the contrast of the object that is considered as our interest. The assignment for this session is you could list few real time applications that you see on your daily life where machine vision is applied for counting, location, decoding and measurement. You could also perform some kind of contrast enhancement on an image where contrast is very poor or where you want to identify an object using some spatial domain methods. The references that was used for this lecture are these books. You can also refer to it. For any other queries, you could always contact my mail which is available in this presentation. Thank you for listening to this lecture. Thank you.